from the Ball State News Center, this is NewsLink Indiana in high definition. Good evening and welcome to NewsLink Indiana. I'm Cameron Little. And I'm Jillian McNulty. Topping our news tonight, a former Muncie Central High School staff member is under investigation after $20,000 are unaccounted for. The State Board of Accounts asked Angie Mock, former Athletic Secretary for Central High School, to pay for over 3,600 tickets that they believe she kept the profits from. In a statement to the Star Press, Mock said that she had not paid any money to the school because she did not take anything. The State Board of Accounts is backed by the Indiana Attorney General, who is demanding that Mock pay in the school that Mock pay the school $19,471 for the unaccounted for tickets. Well, if you've registered a vehicle in the last 10 years, well, you may be receiving some money for the DMV. The Indiana Bureau of Motor Vehicles is paying out $29 million in refunds after improperly classifying vehicles. Around 180,000 motorists should be receiving a letter within the next few days. The investigation comes less than a week after an agency asked a Marion County Court judge not to release a video and a deposition over a different lawsuit dealing with the excessive fees. The video shows the deputy director, Matthew Foley, testifying that the agency knew about the unauthorized fees but did not act upon it due to budget concerns. Governor Mike Pence has now hired an independent consultant firm to audit all of the BMV's procedures. A blood test that revealed the Delaware County investigator who caused a four-car crash on Saturday had a blood alcohol content more than four times over the legal limit. The preliminary police report contained the blood test information of investigator Todd Daly. The test was administered after Daly slammed into the back of a stopped car at the intersection of State Road 32 and Country Club Road on Saturday afternoon. According to the police report, a witness said Daly appeared to be traveling at speeds upwards of 60 miles per hour when he slammed into the stopped car. Well, hey, it is that time of year again. It's time to bring the jackets out and the warm drinks. It's fall. It sure is. I had my first pumpkin spice latte from Starbucks today, so you know that is the time of year. It's That's official now. <laughs> well, let's head over and see what our weather is looking like in the next couple of days. Yeah, it is beginning a little bit chilly in the mornings. As you can see, we saw a low of 50 degrees this morning. Kind of chilly heading to class, but it wasn't as far from the average as the high temperature. It was a 13 degree difference, a high of 64. The average is 77. So getting chilly in the morning so you may be getting some more of your pumpkin spices as you head to class 52 degrees is the current temperature calm winds the dew point is 49 degrees we are going to start to see some fog later so as the temperature and dew point get a little closer that's what we're going to be concerned with here and as you can see there are some clouds they're starting to head south and they're diminishing a little bit so with the clouds diminishing that's what's bringing us to cooler temperatures coming in through the rest of the night and if what you can expect coming up here, we have warmer air coming in, weekend rain. Stay tuned to see if you need to change any plans. And we're talking another cool down in the card. So stay tuned to find out when all this is possible. Thanks so much for that update, David. On Wednesday, September 17th, the Career Fair is coming to Worthen Arena. This fair has many advantages to those who come out. It, appears, it appeals to upperclassmen because of the possible future employers are looking for future employees. Along with this opportunity comes the chance to get valuable internships. This is something that one cannot miss. Be sure to RSVP so that you can come out tomorrow to expand your horizons. You won't be disappointed. Well, the Ball State Symphony Concert will soon make its debut this Thursday when they perform at Sursa Performance Hall with all new tunes. Kelsey Dickelson has reports. The Ball State Orchestra has been working hard to prepare for their concert. Orchestra conductor Doug Drosty gives more insight into the pieces on the concert. We are performing three pieces, the first of which is the um, Overture to La Forza del Destino by Giuseppe Verdi. And then we will be performing the, uh, performing the Ino Tomberg Trumpet Concerto featuring our trumpet professor here at Ball State, Brittany Hendricks. And then the second half of the program is the Franck Symphony in D minor. I think the overture is very appealing. I think the trumpet concerto is uh, very unique and certainly shows off um, one of our, our, our dynamic faculty here at Ball State. Um, and then the, the, uh, the, the symphony is beautiful and with big romantic themes. I think uh, somebody's going to latch on to something on this concert. Concertmaster Natalia Nizhalova talks about her favorite pieces and preparation for the concert. I really like 
um, the trumpet concerto, so mm -hmm. I think this is my favorite piece on this program. It really reminds me of my home country because this uh, the composer Tamberg, he is an Estonian composer, and I hear a lot of uh, Shostakovich and Prokofiev influences. Overall, I enjoy playing all the pieces. Mm -hmm. I just like music and I like playing. I was practicing for each rehearsal, maybe just a little bit, and then mm -hmm. I rehearsed. We rehearsed it a lot, and we had sectional rehearsals. Mm -hmm. So we put some work on these pieces. The orchestra is prepared, and we are ready to mm -hmm. play this kind of concert. You can see the Ball State Symphony Orchestra perform this Thursday at 7.30 p.m. at Sursa Performance Hall. Well, still to come, Ahmed is headed back to prison after the brutal, brutal murder of his girlfriend. Coming up with the disturbing details of how he ate some of the crime scene. And Scotland could soon be independent from the UK. What will it take and when it could happen coming up next? Pretty much a good day for me would be people leaving their hands off of me. I'm always called names. Um, everywhere that I go, there's always someone um, calling me names, calling me gay. I've been choked, thrown up against a wall, punched. Nobody's ever tried to help me. This is Newslink Indiana. Welcome back to Newslink Indiana. A southern Indiana man is facing felony charges for the grisly murder of his girlfriend, whose organs he admits to eating. Katie Bauer has more. My name is Zeus Brown. I'm known as Mr. Oberhansley. As Joseph Oberhansley was escorted out of court, he took his new identity with him. I don't buy it. Um, I think there is a, a motive and a reason for uh, what you saw in the courtroom today. And uh, I don't believe that he really believes he's Zeus Brown. According to the probable cause affidavit, Jeffersonville police officers were called to Tammy Jo Blanton's home on Locust Street just before 3 a.m. on September 11th. She told officers that her ex-boyfriend, Overhansley, was outside, refusing to leave after she changed the locks. Officers say they watched him drive away before they left. I believe the officers uh, that responded to that call uh, responded appropriately and took all uh, measures that were necessary uh, to ensure the peace at that time. Just hours later, police were back at Blanton's home after a co-worker called. Police went to check on Blanton and said that Overhansley answered the door. Court documents say officers took Overhansley down when he started to reach in his pocket. In the bathroom, police stated they found Blanton's body in the tub covered by a vinyl tarp. After being a prosecutor for so long, you think you've uh, seen everything. And this is one of those cases where I've never seen this. After Oberhansley was taken into custody, police say he confessed to killing Blanton with a knife. According to the probable cause, he also admitted to dismembering her body and cannibalism. Court documents state that Blanton's heart was removed along with her skull and part of her lungs. Particularly in a case like this where there are such extraordinary allegations of uh, cannibalism, uh, it's got to make people in our community scratch their heads and say, what's going on here? And it does the same thing to me. Prosecutors say Oberhansley was free on parole for the murder of his ex-girlfriend when he was a teenager. Last year, he was also charged with strangulation and resisting law enforcement after a bar incident. Well, with the help of an aerospace industry stalwart and a relative upstart, the U.S. is getting back in the space business. On Tuesday, NASA announced its plans for a revived mission for American astronauts on American spacecraft. Karen Kafer reports from Washington. One up in the air Bears. for almost 100 years, the other around for just over a decade. Aerospace giant Boeing and Elon Musk's SpaceX, following a four-year competition, have been tapped by NASA for a private sector partnership to put American astronauts back on American spacecraft. From day one, the Obama administration has made it very clear that the greatest nation on Earth should not be dependent on any other nation to get into space. The first flight to the International Space Station is planned for 2017, the year in which an agreement with Russia ends. The contracts are worth $6.8 billion. Boeing bid with its CST-100 space capsule. 
SpaceX already shuttles cargo to the ISS with its Dragon capsule. 10, 9, 8. NASA's space shuttle program flew 135 missions over three decades before being cut amid funding concerns. So when Atlantis touched down at Kennedy Space Center in the pre-dawn hours of July 21st, 2011, the space shuttle pulls into port for the last time. It marked the end of an era. Now, a new chapter for Cape Canaveral and new goals for NASA. Turning over low Earth orbit transportation to private industry will also allow NASA to focus on an even more ambitious mission, that of sending humans to Mars. NASA said hopping on Russian spacecraft cost about $70 million per seat, typically purchasing six seats per year. Recent tensions between Russia and the U.S. over Ukraine have also led to increased tensions between the two space programs. In Washington, I'm Karen Kafa. Well, in a move that could redefine the United Kingdom, the, count, the county of Scotland, or sorry, the country of Scotland is asking and could soon see its independence if voters get their way. While speaking in Aberdeen yesterday, Prime Minister David Cameron urged Scottish voters to reject the upcoming vote for independence. The country stands at the heart of Britain's ener energy industry, with about 90% of UK oil coming from Scotland. A high turnout is expected in the Thursday referendum. And with autumn just around the corner, we'll tell you what fall activities people in the community are doing. And those fall temperatures are here, but how long will they stay? We'll have your full forecast when we come back. The next 30 seconds can save you a lot of money. Just do your laundry in cold and stick to full loads. Auto sleep your computers. Plug your gadgets in a power strip and switch it off when you're done. Head it out. Turn back your thermostat by 10 degrees. And drive sensibly. The more energy you save, the more money you save. Find other great tips at energysaver.gov. This is Newslink Indiana. Fans wanting to root on the Cardinals on Saturday's game against Toledo are getting some help from the nest. Stephen Prosser has the details on the bus ride to the game and how you can get on board. This weekend, Ball State football hits the road towards Toledo on Saturday. And after a tough loss to Indiana State, the team could sure use some support. However, paying for gas and putting extra miles on their cars is not something students want to do. So in order to increase attendance, the Nest, led by President Jen Zarati, has, is giving students a chance to ride a bus to Toledo. Well, yeah, they're getting a little help to the game this coming weekend and the question is what's the forecast looking like for the game? Here in Muncie it's supposed to be 79 degrees on Saturday but I'm pretty sure up in Toledo you'll see, still see some mid 70s so it's going to be a beautiful beautiful weather for the game. Uh, no rain till later at night so nothing to worry about for rain chances or anything on the commute but sounds well, like good. perfect game weather I would say. Yeah yeah Great. I'd say so too good game weather. Question okay. is ask for tonight's forecast how's it looking? Well Tonight we're going to see some cool temperatures. The temperature right now is much cooler than what you see for, uh, or is not as going to be as cool as what you see right now. 52 degrees for your current temperature. Winds are calm, dew point 49 degrees. We're going to move on here. Uh, satellite and radar, we have some clouds. Those clouds are diminishing. With the clear skies we're going to see tonight, that's going to allow some fog to develop as the temperature and dew point similar come together. Current temperature is 52. As you can see where some of those clouds still are, Dayton and Cincinnati, that's where the warmer temperatures are. The clouds are holding in the warmth. But if you want to take a look here, highs today, where the clouds were, that's where you see the cooler temperatures. 64 for the high today in Muncie, 63 in Indianapolis, where they did see clouds all day, Dayton and Cincinnati, 62. And if you take a look north where the clouds broke earlier today, 66 for Fort Wayne, Kokomo, and Lafayette. So warmer temperatures throughout the day for far further north. As we take a look at precision cast, midnight tonight, it's mostly clear. It'll stay clear through the night, and we're going to see some low-level clouds, some fog perhaps developing in central and southern Indiana. As we move through, that'll burn off, and it's going to stay clear for most of the day. We do see a little bit of clouds and precipitation to the south, but that's going to stay to the south, and we're not going to worry about that throughout the rest of the evening tomorrow. Looking at tonight, though, as I said, patchy fog, chilly, 44 for your start, so you may need a jacket as you head to class early in the morning. But as we look at tomorrow, it's going to warm up 66 degrees for the high, mostly sunny, mild. That fog will burn off. we got a light wind, 2 to 5 miles per hour. If you take a look at the 7-day, it's going to start cool, but we're going to warm up. As I said, 79 is the highest temperature on Saturday. As you see, Sunday, we have a chance for rain Saturday night into Sunday. 
that rain is going to bring cooler temperatures and when we see the cooler temperatures it's going to dip down to 63 degrees by Tuesday next week. All right, so I mean it's a, it's a little bit chilly, but it's up from here as we move yes. on to the game. Yes. Looks like a great couple days ahead of us leading up to the weekend. We'll probably have some nice mild days. Definitely. In there, so that's great. Yeah, it's going to warm up each day. Thanks yeah. so much, David. All right. Well, it is that time of year again as we look for that cold weather, warm jackets, and hot chocolate, of course, football. That's right. Fall is here, and we want to know what your favorite thing is about the fall. Sierra Holmes hit the streets and has your answers. It is tonight's Quick Question. Hi, I'm Sierra Holmes and this is the quick question portion of Newslink. Today I'm out on campus asking students what their favorite thing about fall is since fall is only a few days away. It gets cooler because mm -hmm. this hot sun walking on campus is not for me. Yeah. So I would say that's the best part. I really like the weather. Um, the outfits. I guess I just love the colors. The colors? The colors and the changing seasons. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I just like the season changing because like you can t you can feel the difference mm -hmm. with fall. Other times it's just like there. I like the leaves and just kind of like the pretty atmosphere that's outside. Okay, yeah. What yeah, I really love just the atmosphere and when it gets colder, but you don't need a coat yet. It's oh, it's just amazing. And there's bonfires, and pumpkin spice lattes. You guys need to go get some. Thanks so much for that look at what everyone's thinking about the fall weather. Find out how the women's golf team did in Louisville over the past couple of days coming up next. And see who was honored at tonight's local high school. Here's to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are. This is Newslink Indiana. Welcome back to Newslink Indiana. I'm Amanda Smith with your sports. Ball State's women's golf team ended Louisville's Cardinal Cup in ninth place today. Freshman Kayla Adamson led the team in the final round with a score of 75. Ball State posted an overall team score of 315 in the tournament. Allison Lindley was named the Cardinals' top individual finisher for the second straight event. The sophomore finished with a total of 226 to place 14th overall. Ball State will play the first round of their home opener Monday. Two years ago, Ball State's field hockey team defeated Indiana University here at home, and they are looking to repeat history in tomorrow's game. Here is actually some footage from that contest two years ago. Just last year, the Cardinals, currently 3-2, were defeated in a 1-6 loss by the Hoosiers on the road. The women's team has had a strong start to their season with three consecutive wins, but have struggled to keep that momentum. Going into tomorrow's game, the team will be coming off of back-to-back -back losses from Syracuse and Ohio State. The home opener will begin at 4 p.m. And Ball State women's volleyball team will hit the road again tomorrow where they will play IPFW. The team, currently 3-6, has lost four consecutive matches within the last three weeks at Invitational Tournaments. With the upcoming contest, the Cardinals will be looking for leadership from statistically ranked juniors Haley Benson, Alex Welling, Kaylee Hopkins, and Jenna Spadafora. Spadafora recently landed herself a spot on the Hotel Red All-Tournament team, for her dominating play over the two-day event at the University of Wisconsin. Tomorrow's first serve versus the Mastodons is set for 7 p.m. You can listen to the match live on 91.3 WCRD beginning around 6.45. An exciting time actually for their head volleyball coach, Steve Shondell. Shondell was inducted into the Athletic Hall of Fame this evening at Burris Laboratory School. In over 34 years at Burris, he coached the Owls to four national championships and 21 state championships, which included 13 consecutive titles at the 2A level. During his career, he was actually named um, two-time National High School Coach of the Year and led the Owls to a perfect 40-0 season. And um, he's actually the first member actually to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. So. A really cool time for the team. How right. exciting for the school. What a great representation for us in, yeah, the, in the volleyball definitely. world. And he's actually a Ball State alum, so a lot of people don't know oh, that. It's so really cool to see him being recognized by the local community. All right, thanks, Amanda. We'll be right back after this.
the average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. This is Newslink Indiana. Welcome back to Newslink Indiana. I am Moye Whitehead with your entertainment news. Wes Moore, the author of this year's freshman comment reader at Ball State, the other Wes Moore, spoke with community at Ammons Auditorium this evening. Reporter Madeline May caught up with him before the show. big message that I want to try to promote is that we all have a sense of involvement and, a, and we all have a sense of responsibility. This is not something that we should wait for other people to take on. This is not something we take on after we get our degrees. This is something we have to do right now. The urgency is here and what better moment to do something about it than right now. Well, I think one of the most important things we can do is actually helping young people understand that your decisions uh, don't just matter right now and that, uh, it's, it's, that second chances do become last chances. And so you have to think very carefully and very critically about that. Over 1,000 students and community members attended this event. Talk show host Tavis Smiley added some Hoosier flavor to ABC's hit show Dancing with the Stars last night. Smiley, a graduate of Indiana University and McConaughey High School in Banker Hill, Indiana, along with his partner, Smiley received a 29 out of 40 points. Previous Dancing with the Star contestants with ties to Indiana include South Bend native and actress Vivica A. Fox, IU graduate Mark Cuban, and former Pacer forward Ron Artest. Monday's top scorer went to Fresh Prince of Bel-Air actor Alfonso Ribeiro, who scored a 36 out of 40 points. All right, thank you, Moye. And I did see Carlton do his thing. <laughs> he was good. He was good. <laughs> Let's get a final check of the forecast, David. Yeah, we're going to start out uh, tomorrow's going to be a high of 66. We're going to warm up Thursday to 69. Friday, we're warming up throughout the rest of the week, 73. Saturday, we're going to see some rain near the evening, 79 degrees for the high. But most of that rain isn't going to come in until the overnight hours, so there's going to be nothing really to worry about Saturday afternoon. But if you have plans late Saturday night or maybe even early Sunday morning, there may be a little bit of rain in the forecast for that time. But other than that, the rest of your Sunday looks dry. So if you do have plans Saturday or Sunday, I wouldn't cancel them or change them unless, like I said, they are late at night or early Sunday morning. Sunday, though, we're going to stay at 75. A weak cold front passes through with that rain. We're going to see 71 on Monday, nice and mild. And then Tuesday, we're actually going to start to get a little bit more of that cool air, 63. And if we were to head back into the middle of the week next week, it's going to start to get a little cooler than 63, too. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. All right. Mm -hmm. So weekend football is still on. Yes. All right. Good <laughs> to know. All right. Well, that's all for this edition of Newslink Indiana. I'm Jillian McNulty tonight. And I'm Cameron Riddle. We are coming back for more news tomorrow night at 9. You should, too. Until then, have a good night.